your seatbelts. With the Windows 10 RTM date getting closer and closer, I would like to take a look at the problems with Windows 8 so we can see if those problems still exist in Windows 10 when it is released this July. Confusion on how to shut down a Windows 8 PC When Windows 8 was released, this power button wasn't here so there was a bit of confusion on how to actually shut down a Windows 8 PC. And with all the hidden menus, users spent a lot of time unintuitively searching for a way to shut down their PC. Desktop users had to use these weird touch optimized gestures in order to access the charms menu, settings, power, and then finally shutdown options. Some users even had to resort to a hard shutdown. Charms menu The entire concept of the Windows 8 charms menu is confusing. The concept of the charms menu was a hidden menu that was used as a way for apps to access settings. So all of the settings or metro applications weren't even in the applications themselves. They were instead hidden within the charms menu. Also, the charms menu was often accidentally accessed, causing a lot of frustration. Poor user interface design in almost all Metro apps. Nearly every Metro app uses continuous side scrolling, which wasn't ideal for keyboard and mouse users. Metro apps also hid menus, but not just in the charms menu. They hid essential menus within the apps themselves, and the only way to access them was to either swipe up or right click. Lack of high quality apps in the Windows Store. There is a huge lack of high quality apps in the Windows Store. Not because the apps aren't there, the store actually has quite a few big name apps. It is because of the hidden menu user interface that developers tried to copy from Windows 8. So the lack of menus either left Metro apps displaying large amounts of information with little to no UI element, or not enough information to cover the app, resulting in some apps often looking too bare and plain. Awkward touch gestures for desktop users. Another unfamiliar and unintuitive UI element in Windows 8 was the touch gestures, which were fine for touch but a nightmare for desktop users. In order to view all open Metro applications, the user had to swipe in from the left side of the screen, or mimic that with a mouse by moving to the upper left corner and moving the mouse down slightly. Also, in order to open the charms menu, the user had to use a similar awkward mouse gesture on the right side of the screen. Metro versus Desktop Instead of having a touch option for tablet users, Windows 8 forces desktops and laptops to use a touch optimized OS in place of the familiar start menu. The Metro user interface and the desktop user interface are completely separate. They literally slapped a tablet OS on top of a desktop operating system. Also, Metro apps would not run in the desktop or show up in the familiar taskbar, and desktop programs would not run in the Metro user interface or show up in the Metro taskbar. To make things worse, the desktop actually acts as an app within the Metro user interface, and Metro apps were automatically set as the defaults for desktop users, so when users tried to look at pictures or videos from an SD or USB device, Windows 8 would switch modes to tablet mode, loading up full screen images and videos with no menus so the user would not know how to return to the desktop. Start screen the start menu was replaced with the start screen, which is a large full screen touch optimized OS in place of the familiar and practical start menu. When accessed, the start screen would cover a user's desktop, workspace, taskbar, programs, and other menus which would leave the user confused about where they were in the operating system. To make things worse, Windows 8 would boot the user directly into the start screen by default. So by default, any computer, whether it is a desktop, laptop, or tablet, would boot directly into a tablet OS. Unfamiliar and Unintuitive User Interfaces Windows 8 was unintuitive and unfamiliar, and that was its biggest problem. No one knew how to use Windows 8 and often got lost, confused, and frustrated while attempting to use it. People who stuck with it had to unintuitively learn how to use the operating system. That also created the how to use Windows 8 videos and articles that you see on various websites and YouTube videos. And if things weren't irritating enough, the user interface hit every important menu and setting that it possibly could in what seemed to be an attempt to frustrate users. When Windows 10 releases this July, I will be putting this list to the test to see if Microsoft has really fixed all of these issues. Thanks for watching and please remember to like the video if you enjoyed and subscribe if you want to see our upcoming Windows 10 videos.